Oh, hello there. It's been a while. And I'm on sand? Hmm. Oh, I'm still on it. How do I get... Oh, there, we're free. So this is a tutorial about using script calls in your projects. So how can you use script calls within the existing RPG Maker MZ framework, although this also works with a lot of MV, um, to just simplify some of the things you're going to want to do without using plugins. And that's not to say plugins are bad, but sometimes we just prefer to use script calls and not rely on having someone develop a plugin for us. And bonus points, these are some JavaScript calls, so you do learn a little JavaScript in the process. That said, I am not a JavaScript expert and uh, I would never claim to be. So this is just from a hobbyist use and I want to show you some of the things you can do. So you already saw me step on this tile and it says I'm on sand. Now we could just do this with a simple eventing, um, but in this case I'm using a parallel that checks the X and Y of the player and when it's equal to an X and Y on the map, it triggers this event to happen. So. Yes, we could make that a player touch event in this specific case, but here we have the opportunity to show how we can make more dynamic things happen. The same thing here, we apply that same strategy to say when the players X and Y are on a certain region ID, so this whole tile, rock, whatever that is in MZ, um, when I'm on that, the monster will follow after me. So you see it's chasing me, and if it hits me, that's just an event trigger and it says rar. But when I'm not on it, it doesn't follow me. So I use that same player.x, player.y to check these things. And we're going to look at the code in 30 seconds, maybe a little longer. We can do the same thing here. Oh, public service announcement. Um, turn your sound effect volume down when you're making a game. It's always too loud. It's so much louder than everything else around it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, and then that bell. Oh, but look, it turned on this witch over here. You probably can't hear me over the bell, though. So in case you didn't hear me, you see here I push that event. That's just basic touch functionality. But when it's on this, so I'm setting the event ID of this, when the X and Y are equal to this square, it triggered that witch we saw. And the last thing we'll just look at quickly, these are all location-based um, script calls today, uh, and I'll do more in the future, hopefully. Ooh, we're being chased, but when I'm in a cross pattern next to this um, purple haired character, it says it's working. Oh, and it's just going to play because it's a parallel. Um, and it's still working. Here it's still working. Here it's still working. Oh, I got to get off that. Oh, here, not working. So as long as I'm not directly parallel to this character, it's working. So, of course, there are ways to do this just using the basic engine. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Um, but ultimately, script calls give us just a little more functionality, particularly for things like this. So let's look at some of the code here. So here's our map. And you see I've got this event here. Well, there's not that much going on on it, just like this event. Uh, you know, there's a little here. We'll take a look at that in a second. This event is just a simple trigger push event uh, and this event only appears when a certain switch is on. A test switch which is oh, apparently spelled with two J's now. So we have these basic things and most of what's happening here is controlled with one parallel event. So this controls the I am on sand event we saw, this controls the uh, monster chasing us event, and this controls the witch appearing bell sound effects blah event. Um, and you'll notice here there's also a 10 second delay that I have, or 10 frame delay rather. Um, I do this for my player's sake, because uh, we don't need these running every frame, most cases. So if it's movement based, most movement takes place over about 30 frames or half a second. Um, so usually anything less than that is functional, um, but just test it out. But in general, setting a weight on your parallel events will help limit lag occurring for your players and for yourself. So let's take a closer look at some of these things. So we have here a conditional branch. And all this conditional branch is doing is really what we could already do with some kind of basic con like control variables. Like we could set game x equal to game data and uh, 
player map x and this would give us the x value of the player and we could do the same with the y using control variables well this is just the faster way of doing that which is game player this is the player's x value dot x and game player dot y is the game player y value um, and here it's important to note that JavaScript is case sensitive so this is lowercase this is uppercase um, if you don't do that it won't work um, so dot x dot y same same syntax and here I have it set to 3 and 2 so if it equals 3 and it equals 2 uh, then we end up here oh this is at 3 and 2 so we've got a Ceph working event based on a parallel running every 10 frames this is also controlling the region ID so if the player's region ID um, and this is the region ID is gathered based on an X and Y value well here it's based on the player's X and Y value so if the player's X and Y value is equal to 3 which you can see if we bring up our regions is this so when the player is on any of these squares let's say X or Y uh, that is in this range of the threes it will trigger this event to happen now again we could do this using kind of more complicated calls but here we simplify it um, by just writing it all in one quick short conditional script which is game region ID and again the capital matters here on the I and on the M and same with the player here so if that's equal to three it triggers a self switch so this isn't an actual switch. I'm controlling the self switch on this event monster, which is either going to say, hey, if no self switch is on, which the player will probably never see in this current setup, or rar. And when self switch A is on, that's what's going to happen. And it also has a custom route to chase the player with a bit of move delay, uh, normal speed, but higher frequency. Um, and if it touches it, then it's going to do that RAR event. So the chase is based on this. So many people would ask for a chase plugin. You can do things like this just using um, region IDs, terrain tags, or even just X and Y coordinates. You can compare them against uh, the uh, player, which we'll see in a second. So these are all things you can do with just some basic script calls. Um, now, sometimes we use the script call within the conditional, like I did here you could technically write this out as an if statement if you're more comfortable with JavaScript and it's just fine you can put that script too um, in most cases I just find it to be easier to use the built-in script functionality so if the players um, ID is equal to the X and Y coordinate of 3 uh, or the region ID of 3 sorry uh, then this will trigger the self switch of this map, we can change this if you want to change a switch on a different map you can set that to be that, um, so it could be map 1, map 5, whatever in this case this dot underscore map refers to the current map this event is being called on um, you can use that same kind of structure I'll talk about later, um, maybe not today uh, to do event, but this is the event ID, so this is event 2, the monster and I want self switch A to turn on, it could be B, C, D um, I actually haven't tested this to see if you can go beyond that. My guess is no, but maybe it works. And then true, this means the switch is on. You can also turn that off. And if not, that's exactly what I do. So if the game player is not on region 3, as this says, uh, then I turn that off. So that turns the switch on and off, and it's just a self switch. In this other case, I'm modifying the switch itself, like an actual switch. So if the game map event, so if this event of rock, let's, let's, ooh, sound effect. Uh, if this event of rock, let's name it, this is event three. If event three is on x of 12 and y of six, so x12, y6, that's our weird sand trap here, whatever that's supposed to be. Uh, if the rock is on that, it triggers the switch to appear because it turns on the switch. So in addition to setting self switches, you can just set switches. And that's all done, again, in a parallel event. Now, you don't have to use these in parallel events. There are other ways to use them. 
but this is one of the convenient, quicker ways of writing this. So when x is 12 of the rock and y is 6 of the rock, play a bell sound and set the value to 1, or set the value of 1 to true. And if it's not that, turn it off. That's the else. So again, you can write this with more JavaScript than just a full script, but um, I find in general a lot of the built-in stuff with a few small script calls can make it a lot faster. Um, and what this does is, like, yes, you could do this probably, uh, well, you can. You can do this with just basic event. But this and sim, two ands together, allow for a much faster way of writing. If this script, so if x is 12 and y is 6 or whatever I just told you, um, it's just a faster way of writing that than having multiple conditions um, nested together. Uh, another useful function is the or, which we'll see in a second, which is these two downward lines. Um, I think there's probably a name for what that symbol is. I just don't know it because I don't actually know JavaScript. Um, but here you can see them. This two down lines on your computer means or. So if one of these things is true. But in this case, we want the and. So that's how that functions. And the last thing we'll look at is this very long script. And so this is the one that if it's in a cross around this event, it triggers her to say, uh, what does she say? Working. Oh, she says working. So this is game mat, this event. So rather than saying event four, you could put a four here, or no, five, sorry. You could put five here, and that would be the same function. But this, uh, this underscore event ID refers to the event this action is happening on. And you'll see it's a parallel down here. Uh, and I have it minus one for the Y. So if this event's Y is minus one, and that number is equal to the player's Y, something happens. Um, so if this event is on Y 13 and the player is on 12, this event will trigger. Um, so that's the key here. And you'll see it's a very long script as I scroll through it here. So I have a bunch of or statements. So if it's y minus 1 of the event, it triggers. If it's x minus 1 of the event, it triggers. If it's y plus 1 of the event, it triggers. And if it's y or x plus 1 of the event, it triggers. Whatever I haven't said. Um, so you see this is very long. And the easier way to look at this is to come back to um, my notepad++ files. And this is something I would recommend as you start to get more comfortable using these things, is to write the stuff out in Notepad++. So this is that event. Um, but when I wrote it, I actually just did not like the way that it looks when it's all on one line. And I split each OR statement into a separate line so I could see what I was saying. Um, and I keep this quick reference document for MZ. Uh, have one for MV as well, which has some more stuff in there, some jump commands, weird things. Uh, but for MZ, I'm starting to build this up, um, and I'm sharing a lot of that with you. Uh, so this allows us to control like spaces around a thing. You can expand that to be a full square. You can expand that to be multiple squares. Um, if you want line of sight, it's like this. You can kind of build just using this XY comparative. So I keep a quick reference document, like I said here, of things that I want to remember the syntax for so I don't can copy paste them, I don't have to write them out because I'm very not good about proofreading and make lots of mistakes and JavaScript is case sensitive. So, um, so that's that's all we're going to do today. You can see here I have some array stuff, uh, movement stuff, inventory stuff I've been putting together, um, some input stuff based on button pressing. Uh, these are some of the things I've been working on in MZ. In MV I have even more. Um, but all of this is really just coming from the core files. So particularly RMZ or RMMZ objects.js. The core itself is not that useful for most of the stuff I'm doing in the game. But the objects has a lot of functionality. You just look at and see how is it framed and how can you adjust these things. Uh, managers, windows, and scenes can be useful if you're messing with um, a little more of the game files themselves. Um, but all of this is just kind of can read through that that stuff if you feel more confident in JavaScript and see well what script calls can you pull from that. So this is coming from looking at MZ's files as well as MV. 
uh, and seeing, well, how can I modify switches? How can I modify self switches? How can I change event positions? Um, all of this can be useful, I think, in calling up your data. So uh, in the future, I hope to share a few more examples. And if you look at the uh, files I share with this, you can see the actual code. And my point here is to say, like, you can do a lot with just a few script calls, knowing just a basic amount of JavaScript. Um, and it really opens up the realm of what you can do in your games. So in the future, I hope to come back to more, though given my track record with making tutorials, I make no promises.